I guess this is a still life. But why does everything look so old and worn? The music has stains, and the tablecloth is moth-worn. Is it one of those Dutch vanities? It is a still life, but it's not Dutch, and it's not a Vanitas painting. Vanitas painted in the 16th and 17th centuries were still lifes meant to convey the idea that earthly life and possessions fade away. They were full of symbolism. This still life was done by Philadelphia artist William Harnett in 1888. The public loved his work, but the critics, not so much. He celebrated average, everyday objects. Well, he does that amazingly well. They aren't precious objects. They're just bric-a-brac. It's so nostalgic and real. Harnett was an illusionist. He carefully painted trompe l'oeil effects with the intention of really fooling the viewer into believing objects might be real. And he once painted money that was so real the police were concerned he might be a forger. They confiscated the painting and questioned the artist. Did he also paint amazing portraits? No, Harnett never painted portraits. Pretty much all he painted were these trompe l'oeil still lifes. And to place a point on it, he much preferred used, worn items. He enjoyed painting printed material, newspapers, sheet music, and souvenirs like ticket stubs. He also used a darker palette and preferred masculine subjects. During his lifetime, machine-made, mass-produced items could easily be found, but Harnett resisted adding these objects to his paintings. I think the title says it all, My Gems. You can just picture these objects next to a worn old armchair in a well-used library or music room. Having tried before and lost four times, in 1774 Jacques-Louis David eventually won a competition and spent five years studying art in Rome. This work, the Oath of the Orati, is an important painting since it contained classical influences and defined French neoclassicism. Painted in 1784, it inspired the men who fought in the French, French Revolution just a few years later. It's very large, over 10 by 14 feet, and very dramatic. Yes, it is. But what's an orati? It's not a what, it's a who. The orati were brothers. The subject is based on legendary events of around 669 BC and a 1640 play about those events. Oras is about the tragic story of two ancient families, the Orati and the Curiati, who were united by marriage, but who are chosen to fight each other to defend their cities. The Orati brothers are depicted in this painting as swearing an oath to their father that they will die, if needed, to defend Rome against the neighboring city of Alba Longa. It's very formal and geometric with classical styling, very different from Rocco's paintings of the time that seem frivolous by comparison. The men appear so strong and determined, the women and children so subdued and sad. In the legend, one of these brothers is already united in marriage to the enemy. And a sister, can you guess which one, is also betrothed to one of the brothers whom the Orati brothers are going off to fight. Her brothers must fight not only their brother-in-law but also her fiancé. They must place their love of country above family and friends. The same story happens throughout history. It happened here during our own revolution and civil war. So that's why the women in the painting are crying. What happens to the men? These brothers fight the Curiati. All the Curiati brothers and two of the Orati die, and the single returning Oratus brother receives condemnation from his sister for killing her fiancé. He has a very sad ending. David became one of France's most important painters and was a strong supporter of the French Revolution and Napoleon. Say, Jacques-Louis David, Orati, Curiati. What does this sculpture represent? This sculpture is carved in a cubist style and is representing a woman with a violin. I think it looks a little like a soldier with his helmet and shield. How was it made? Originally a tree, it was carved out of the wood using carving tools. Most likely sketches were first drawn in order to develop the idea. The woman and violin have been reduced to simplistic shapes. Marjorie O'Reilly is the artist who created this piece of three-dimensional design. What is three-dimensional design? Three-dimensional design, also known as 3D, is an object that can be measured in three ways, width, height, and depth. I don't think the girl looks very happy about playing the cello. This oil painting is another painting painting in the Expressionism style. It is showing emotion, 
Why do you think she is barefoot? Maybe she came in from playing because her mother is making her practice. She must be a gifted cello player if the painting is named Barefoot Prodigy. She's actually an eight-year-old reluctant and shy model who actually plays the coronet. Was Martha Elizabeth Moore from America? Yes, Martha Moore was born in Bayonne, New Jersey in 1913. She studied at the Art Students League in New York. She exhibited with the American Watercolor Society, the Audubon Artists, the Society of Independent Artists, and numerous museum shows. She has authored two books, prize-winning paintings and prize-winning art.